to, to work at in order to make a living, and it may not be a much above a minimum wage, or it might be minimum wage, but there are resources out there that people can get to without having to drain your pocketbook. And I'm talking mainly to, to you that are grandparents and parents. Uh, we have grown up in a, a society that, that our kids feel entitled, our grandkids feel entitled, and they, they uh, uh, don't want to pay the price that you and I paid. I started working when I was uh, 16 years old uh, in, in a grocery store after school. But before that, when I was 13, I was pushing a lawnmower around the neighborhood, mowing people's grass to get spending money. And, and uh, from the age of 16 till right now at 66, uh, I, I've worked. I've never been out of, I've never been out of a, a job except for six months when uh, my back uh, was hurt in an accident. But outside of that, I've worked all those years. And, and uh, I've taught my children, if you want something, you've got to work for it. You have to, to I, I'm, I'm going to spend all my money, okay? And I'm not, I don't have anything <laughs> left over. Uh, if you want to go to college, you're going to have to go to college like I did. You're going to have to get a job and work. And I, and I praise God for you that, that are able to provide that and you are saving and you are providing education for your children. Yes, amen. But don't let them sit home and watch video games uh, while you are working uh, hard to provide for their their uh, their future. And uh, you're doing a great work. God has given you many blessings. Many of you, He's given uh, a good uh, income. He's given you good health. And He's given you everything that you need uh, to, to live a life uh, in your senior years comfortably. But if you give it away to people that don't appreciate it, you're going to be worse off and they're not going to be any better off. God is trying to tell you when you're on the top of the wall, he expect, he, there's no reason for you to come down and, and waste your time and energy on people who are not willing to do it themselves. I'm not saying that there's not a place in giving our children and our grandchildren uh, and our friends a helping hand. But there's a difference in a, in a helping hand and a handout. Okay? A helping hand is helping somebody uh, to learn how to take care of their self. You're not just giving somebody a fish, you're teaching them how to fish. And, uh, and again, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying all this stuff because it wasn't what I planned it to say, but I, I evidently... Uh, the Lord wants somebody in here to hear it. Uh, and if it doesn't apply to you and, and you and you feel that you don't need this message, please just be patient with me and, uh, and understand that God is speaking to some people today that, that are struggling with their kids and their grandkids. And, and they feel bad. They feel guilty that they're not able to do more. It's not your problem. It is not your problem. There reaches a time in, in every young adult's life where they got to take personal responsibility for their careers, for their uh, choices, uh, for their uh, issues. Now, I was brought up in a different generation. And maybe I'm out of touch with reality right now. Maybe I'm just talking about when, when I was a kid. But I'm going to tell you something. My uncle that raised me, or my dad and mom, I tell you this often, that they passed away when uh, my dad was 10, my mom was 16, and my uncle raised me. Now, he wasn't a Christian. Yeah? I hope that he got saved before he went to be with the Lord, but, but uh, he was a man that had a lot of common sense. And he knew, he, he was raised uh, hard, and he knew what a hard life was, and he knew how to, to manage money and people and, and uh, his life. 
And uh, he had told me and his son, my cousin, and my brother, he said, I'm going to tell you something, boys. He said, uh, y'all at the age now where y'all 16, 17, 18, and, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're doing pretty good, and I'm proud of you. But let me say something. If you decide to go out and get in trouble, you decide to go out and drink and take drugs, and, and you decide to to uh, steal or do anything else, and you end up in jail, I will not come get you out. <laughs> do not call me. And I don't care how long it takes you to, to find somebody to get you out, but I will not get you out. Now, you know what? You said that was mean. No, it was an incentive for me to stay out of trouble. Because I did not want to, to, to go to jail. Uh, one great thing that happened when I was a teenager and I was in... Uh, a youth group, and we can't do that today because of security and all this kind of stuff today, but our youth director <coughs> took us all to jail <coughs> one Friday night. He arranged it with <coughs> the police department, and he took all of us. He didn't tell us where we was going. He said, all of you get in the, the van or whatever we had, cars, and we went down to the, to the, to the city jail, and the jailer was there, and, and uh, he said, come on in, boys. And, and uh, we went behind the, the locked doors, and there was prisoners on all sides hollering and screaming at us. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and then after we walked through that jail, the jailer came back and talked to us, and he said, boys, you don't really want to come here. I don't want you to come here. But if you get in trouble, this is the type of people you're going to be with. And part of my message this morning that I intentionally was going to give you was it's a lot easier to, to learn from other people's mistakes than it is to, to suffer through the consequences of your own poor decisions. Right. And uh, uh, I learned early that, that uh, people were not going to come off the wall to come down and help me uh, be a fool and be a be a person that was foolish and lived a foolish life. People were not going to give up what they had to come down and help me. But they would help me to come up on top of the wall. And that's what we are, that's what we as as parents and grandparents and and uh, people of God are to do is to bring people on top of the wall where where God is doing a great work. Not to go down, you know, Jesus put it this way. He's, you know, he's, he was, and, he, and of course you know this, but he's the most compassionate uh, person in the world. And, and he was God in flesh. And, and when he walked the streets and he saw people who were struggling, he would stop and minister to them. He would help people that had made enormous mistakes in their life. He helped a woman that had been married five times and got five divorces and, and, uh, and she was living with a man that wasn't even her husband. But Jesus saw and had compassion on her and forgave her and, and got her life straight. Amen. But he also said this to, his, to a group of people that he was speaking to. He said, when you go somewhere and they accept you, you and then they try to bless you, you accept that blessing. But if you go to a place where people reject you, you turn around, you shake the dust off of your feet, and you leave them. Now, when people reject the Word of God that in your Christian standards and your Christian values, you're not going to change them. So the best thing you can do is, is let them let God take care of them until they come to God. Amen. Worrying about other people is not your problem. Right. It's not your business to, to, to solve the world's problems. And I guess I'm probably as guilty as anyone as I, you know, have grown and matured. Uh, I always felt like it was my responsibility to, to, to correct all the wrongs in the world. But I found out that the people that are doing wrong 90% of the time, they don't want to change, okay? So it doesn't matter if you tell them. I've gone into businesses where the service was terrible, 
the 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 uh, uh, the people waiting on you were rude and disrespectful to you. And I went and talked to the owner of the company, and and he said, "Well, I can't do anything about it." I said, "Well, I can do something about it. I won't come back here anymore." <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I just want you to understand that. I know some of you are burdened down with your kids and your grandkids. And you think you can solve their problems. But it's not your problem. Your, your duty and your responsibility is to pray for your children. Ask God, get on your knees every night. Uh, uh, bow your head by your bed and say, Father, help my children. Protect them from evil. Uh, deliver them from temptation. Give them protection uh, in all these things. That is your responsibility. And then God takes over. But He can't do it while you're trying to do it.